just for the record, Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. It's where you take from these investors to pay off these investors. That's a Ponzi scheme. Bernie Madoff is in prison right now for it. I don't want you to back down off of that statement because my kids depend on it. I understand we have obligations to those seniors and it needs to be met. My concern is my kids. I'm 42 years old. I mean, like I said, I think I'm the youngest one in this yeah. folks so far. Yeah. But the problem that I have is, is with this me mentality, that this entitlement mentality that somehow we've gotten into in this country that says, it's me, it's me. And it's, it's what you can earn. It's what you can pursue in your legal right to, to get, but you should not be taking it from one generation to give to another generation. One of the only things I agreed with John McCain on in the previous presidential election and after was what he called it generational theft is what these people have done in the last 19 months. Uh, my question to you is, is when you go to Washington, are you going to remember who you work for? Because number one, it's not your money. And number two, you are the employee. Absolutely. We are the employer. Yeah. Um, Baron Hill is so arrogant. I've only one time I've ever called a representative, and that was during the uh, $787 billion slush fund for the union payback. And I got the runaround from his little crony in his office telling me I didn't know what I was talking about. Like the lady up here said, he's so arrogant, he doesn't listen. That's the problem with people who go to Washington and stay there. Now, the previous Republican that held this seat, I saw him every weekend here among the people. Right. Very good. I want to know if you're going to be there. Absolutely. I will be returning to the district. And you, you will have a familiar face around this district larger than the state of Connecticut. I will leave no area neglected in this district, 20 counties, and uh, we will ensure that uh, everyone feels represented. So essential, and I'm not, I'm not just going to visit with conservatives or just visit with Republicans, just come to the official dinners where you, you give speeches, or just meet with the big wig executives. I mean, to really have a sense of, of how your laws are impacting people or how proposed laws might impact people. Um, you, you need to mix with the constituents themselves. And uh, so first I assure you, yes, I'll take that spirit of, of service with me to Congress and, and uh, ensure that I instill it in those who work for me. They're not just going to hide behind the cloistered walls of our local district offices. They're going to go out and visit with people as well and be accessible and return your phone calls and respond to letters. And when I hear that that doesn't happen, there are administrative snafus and, and mix-ups. We will ensure that whatever mix-ups might have occurred uh, don't occur next time, and we'll get it fixed. So, I mean, that's, that's the only way to do business. That's the only way to serve, and uh, that's what I intend to do. But I want to speak very briefly, sir, because you brought it up. I felt the passion in your voice, and I think it's so fundamental. You've got three children, is that right? We have... We have four children, as I indicated. We, we just had twins six months ago. And uh, this campaign from the beginning, we had two when we started, but, but this campaign has been not just about the current generation. I mean, that's not, that's not what leaders do. They always, they, they're supposed to look over the horizon and look to future generations. And, and uh, our Republican Party, one of the reasons I'm a Republican, and proud of the Republican banner with the occasional excesses that we've discussed in recent years is the origins of our Republican Party. The Republican Party came together. It was a disparate band of Whigs and know-nothings and uh, some Democrats and some independents and free soilers, and they all came together and they said, we got to start a party. And the unifying principle around this party is that every man, woman, and child should be free to enjoy the fruits of their own labor. 
Now, in some respects, ladies and gentlemen, when we spend money we don't have on things we don't need and pass the debts on to our children and grandchildren, aren't we diminishing their freedom? We're not allowing them to enjoy the fruits of their own labor. And so there's a real moral dimension to this spending. This is just, this is not bland, balance sheet sort of issues. This is, I have as much passion for this, sir, as, as, as uh, you showed in your question, and uh, I'm glad you showed it. Uh, and uh, I won't lose that passion. If you ever see me losing kind of the, the fire in the belly, you let me know. Thanks for your question. Yes, sir. I do. Uh, the question was, it, it was a political, a politics question. My campaign manager is in the back, so if he wants to pipe up after I, I give him my best shot, um, that's fine. We will have enough financial, financial support. We're ahead of where we thought we would be at this point. We had a very expensive primary election campaign against some strong competitors. In that primary election, we actually broke fundraising records for a challenger uh, during that, the primary election. During the worst economy since the Great Depression, people stepped up with their limited means because they thought it was so important to get involved in the process. And they've continued to step up. We out-fundraised Barron Hill, I'm proud to say. It's a team effort here. We did it coming out of the primary election. Our first quarter, we, we raised more than an incumbent member of Congress. And it was individual contributions, private individuals that got us there. Ninety-five percent of our contributions at the end of the last fundraising quarter came from private individuals. Anyone want to venture a guess what percentage of Barron Hill's contributions came from private individuals? Okay. Uh, it's higher than that. But. Twenty. 40%, but that, that means 60% of his contributions came from some variant of, of special interests. 5% of ours came from various organizations and associations and, and whatnot. So there's, there's quite a contrast there. I'm proud of that. And um, I guess, you know, again, kind of a, a comprehensive answer to a short question. We're going to have enough juice to get the message out there that the direction the country has been headed is not a positive direction that there's a viable alternative here, and, um, and uh, that will take us across the finish line. Yes? I, this, I just want to add something to the young man, and, and, and this is more for our informational. Uh, Social Security came into being that you had uh, withdrawals from your income was about 1965, is that correct? That Social Security came into being. Somebody knows. I'll have to go back through the Social Security right. history. Yeah. Well, my, my dad. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. For Social Security, so, but Medicare. Medicare. Medicare that was 65. Okay. Well, my dad lived to be 92, and he passed away a few years ago, and he was one of those people who retired at the age of 65 and hadn't paid a lot, and he was a farmer. But he was one of those people that the government didn't think would would draw money for, for many years, and he lived to be 92. But what I want to say is, all the people who are in this room have been paying in out of their paychecks, whether they're self-employed or whatever, to Social Security all those years for your FICA and all of those taxes. So you have paid in money all those years, knowing that when you reach the age of 62 or 65, for me it will be 66, to draw, withdraw full um, uh, Social Security uh, retirement funds. So it's not that the people in this room who are retired or seniors are taking money out that they've never put in. They have. It's just been invested very poorly. Well, that's not, I understand that completely. You know, but the fact is, I mean, not uh, the fact is, is they, they have taken that money and have, and have wasted it. And now it's not there, and people are still saying, give me my money. Well, your money is gone, and I'm 42 years old. I'm not going to see it. And, and when I look.